any sports fans out there in the tubal sphere. Welcome to the One Man Sports Rant, Duh. Gen 2.0. I am your host, Will, the alternative ESPN, or in this case, NBC. Sports Thrill, winding down our Olympics only format. Okay, so what is the OMSR? What is Gen 2.0? Well, in Generation 1, we had over 200 plus shows. Our specialty is covering college sports, namely football and basketball. Had a lot of NBA, NASCAR, things that would come up singular in moment or, or significant in history. And then the NFL came a call in and dinged me. One clip, brief highlights from the Super Bowl. I spoke with a gal who runs NFL Properties LLC there in New York. She flat out told me they never have nor will give anyone permission to post any sort of a highlight ever. Not even if it's 10 seconds. So don't go there. Apparently they just sit around all day looking for videos on social networking sites. Then the NCAA this year with the less serious content ID match, which really bugged me, for some of the NCAA games I've covered, but the majority of them not. So I was like, you know what, forget this. I'm starting to skate towards thin ice, I'm just going to have to take it down and start over. Unfortunately, those 200 shows are gone. And uh, they're not migratable over a bowl to a separate account, if you say like you have multiple accounts on YouTube. But that being said, how it works out now is it's not a 15 minute talk show that's not 15 minutes worth of highlights. But every show will always be 15 minutes and only 15 minutes. So you have to listen to me for only a little bit. Or you can fast forward on average 6 to 10 minutes. I know this may not be your cup of tea. There are plenty of one, min, you know, one to two minute videos all over YouTube, like 10 billion of them. But that's not the goal of this show. It's sports talk mostly, brief video highlights. So you can change the channel, you can fast forward, or you might want to listen because I do try to provide some interesting if not entertaining sports analysis in a context you may not hear on any other network because we don't have to answer to the network, the sponsors, or the producers, which would be the gatekeepers, who were in play tonight with Brazil and U.S. school medal match, women's volleyball, next show. I'll get into that. All right, so I'm going to sound like uh, Tank Neal's operator here for a moment. God, I'm supposed to go through all this board program software stuff. Eh, let's go to combat training. Yeah, well, legal disclaimers are sort of like that. So now I'm going to do my Merv Griffin voice. This show is copyrighted to the OMSR with brief video highlights courtesy to NBC and the IOC. The OMSR does not own these video highlights, but it does own all the other original content and the concept therein. Most rights reserved. Alright, so enough of that. Uh, so the Olympics have been a different format than from Generation 1 to launch uh, Gen 2.0. Uh, been going into you know, what we're covering today. The Life Rant Sports Rant of the Day, as it pertains to the sports subject, that's a carryover from Generation 1. And then the interesting analysis, assuming I don't talk too much and go over on time, and then a couple catchphrases there at the end. Alright, so tonight we're talking about Ledecky and Sony's uh, record-setting swim matches. Now I know it's like a week late, but I thought when I first analyzed this project, well, wait a week, build up enough content so we can provide a vignette of the same sorts of themed sports, different countries, you know, it'll be interesting to see. But as I found out, trying to cover all this, four different channels, ten hours a day, it takes an hour post-production, eight different pieces of software go on, oh boy. It's very difficult. So on my life ran sports around the day, I'll keep it short and simple, it's not a sexist thing, it's just an observation. Why is it that the women who are diving are still in one-piece swimsuits, but the women who just do the straight-up swimming matches switched over to those, like, leotard, Knickerbocker-style one pieces, because I recall, I don't know how many Olympics summer-wise back it was, but they were wearing their one pieces. I don't care how good looking you are as a gal in the pool, those are just not becoming at all. They don't even look good on the dude. So, when did that happen? And, and you know, what's going to change next, I wonder? Okay. Interesting analysis to the highlights. Ledecky being only 15, out-endured all the other women. That's where Adlington lost the match that made her you know, an it girl in England, in Beijing, and then with Sony breaking the USA's longest standing record, you know, some 60 some odd years ago. It's in the clip, you'll hear it. So that was great, seeing a 15 year old, the youngest Olympic member, you hear that in the clip as well. And then I threw in a little bit of women's water ball, or water ball, water polo, interesting factoid, just like I did with the men's and, and with Phelps. So I know I should have tried to cover more swimming events, but it was all a timing issue, and there were so many things going on, and it's not possible to show the whole thing, given the aforesaid, uh, the way the show has to be structured now. 
vis-a-vis -vis the DCA, Digital Copyright Act, and the three premises within that the OMSR adheres to strictly. That is the fair use standard, derivatives, and a minority amount. You could also throw in there's no money being made. This is like a pro bono production. So I found it interesting that Ledecky, you know, from about, I watched the whole thing, obviously the 800 meters, you couldn't, it took a good uh, 10 minutes or so, it seemed like, two commercial breaks and so forth. About midway through, she pulled out, and Adlington was never close in that race. Whatever happened, you know, change that she won it convincingly last year to now, I don't know. And of course, the clips, they're brief, so they sort of start, you know, as they build to the finish line, not at the beginning. But uh, that's the another reason maybe you might want to watch the OMSR because the aforementioned we do have a good knack for timing things out and it's become its own cottage industry in terms of putting together a nice highlight reel it's not too short it's not the whole thing it, su it sums up in a good nutshell for you to be able to tell how the match might turn out. Alright so there's a two minute warning I'm totally out of time here. So without further ado we bid and adieu. Oh man Two, Eddie, Iron Maiden's mascot, you heard the trooper, figured that was a perfect music to lead into, because uh, every athlete to make it this far in the Olympics has been a trooper to get to this point, suffering through the blood, sweat, tears, and all the time spent on training. So the trooper award goes out to, I'm giving it to Ledeck, being the youngest member of our team. All right, so no silly DUIs while you finish up, you know, a lot of gold matches on Sunday, and later days, and not much more Olympic plays. This water polo ball, you've probably been just as taken by it by I, as I have. I mean, it's interesting to see how wet the ball gets and how it still sticks to their hands, so we decided to give you a brief tutorial at home. I'm not an expert, but I do get the privilege of playing one on television, so let's get that women's water polo ball here. It is made by FINA, which is the governing body for all of the aquatic sports in the Olympics. And you can see uh, right here that this is a size 4, a size 4, compact size 4. What does that mean? This is the women's ball. This is the standard. It's about 25 to 26 inches in circumference. And I don't have the biggest hands. I have a ladies medium in a golf glove, if that gives you any perspective whatsoever. But I can, I can somewhat palm this ball. So even though I have relatively small hands, I can get my hand around it. So obviously some of the women with the larger hands have a very good advantage. The grippiness of it, how do they catch it and it sticks to their hands like Velcro in wet, wet water. Well, we have a cotton ball here and we're just going to swipe it across the blue part here to give you some good color contrast. And as you can see, it comes right off. This is a very textured, very gripping material as opposed to other balls like volleyballs or soccer balls which are very fine and a very smooth surface. So, how does this relate to the size of the men's water polo ball? Well, Frank, here we go, just like that, just for the doctor order, we have the men's ball here. This is a size 5, according to FINA. So let's take a look here. Uh-huh, size 5. What is a size 5? Well, for those of us who don't play a lot of water polo here in the U.S., we have probably one of the more friendly reference points, and that is a soccer ball, which is also a size 5. How about my Olympic catching skills? They leave a lot to be desired, don't they? But Frank's throwing skills, off the charts. Olympic standards, definitely. Swing shotting off this wall, but she won't have a chance at goal. Somebody's coach says she's not much in the training pool to get her on the way, so she just takes off. So Sony trying to make it three straight Olympic goals in this event for the Americans. Amanda Beard won it in 2004. Sony four years ago. And Sony way out in front of the field above her. Suzuki in lane three. The biggest threat right now.
just seen the making of the new long distance